Chapter 8.5 Day 2, Applications of Matrices and Determinants. So we're going to use tests for collinear points. We want to see if um, they are collinear. And so when you did the previous lesson having to do with uh, finding the area of a triangle, this is very, very similar. So again, you just test those points, x1, y1, x2, y2, uh, and x3, y3, and we're going to plug them in. So notice x1, y1, that goes in the first position, x2, y2 goes in the second, x3, y3 goes in the third, and then that very last row, or very last column, are all ones. So if it equals zero, then we know that the points are collinear. So let's plug in these values. So we have negative 2, negative 2, 1, 1, 7, 5, and then this is all 1s here. And then you use whatever method you would like. So negative 2, negative 2, 1, negative 2, negative 2, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 7, 5, 1, 7, 5. So I'm doing the diagonal method, and so I'm going to multiply those, add those products together, and then I'm going to add the, I'm going to subtract these products. So then we get uh, negative 2, so negative 2 times 1 times 1, plus negative 2 times 1 times 7, plus 1 times 1 times 5. And then we subtract, so minus 7 times 1 times 1, minus 5 times 1 times negative 2, minus 1 times 1 times negative 2. So you find that this is negative 2 minus 14, plus 5, minus 7, plus 10, and plus 2. And so you see that this, those that cancels, and then we get... So you get negative 16 plus 10, which is negative 6. And then we know, therefore, that it's not collinear. And actually, if we were to figure out the area of the triangle, because we could, we do negative 1 half times negative 6, we would find that the triangle is 3 square units. Now try this one out below. Determine whether the points negative 2, 4, 3, negative 1, and 6, negative 4 are collinear. So if we tried it out, you would find that yes, it is collinear because you would find that the determinant is zero, so they are collinear points. The test for collinear points can be adapted for another use. Given two points in a rectangular coordinate system, you can find the equation of the line passing through the two points. So here is the equation for two-point form of the equation of the line of a line. So if you have distinct points x1, y1. Here, notice we'll put that in this position here, and x2, y2 will go here. So notice we're just going to plug in x and y here, and then on this, this is just the 1. So let's try this out. So the first position here will be x and y, and then this will be all be 1s. And then we plug in our x1, y1, 2 and 4, and then negative 1 and 3, or however you want to fill that out. Okay, so just know that the x and y are in the first column and then one, I'm sorry, first row, and then the ones are in the third column. And then, I know the formatting is kind of funny on my computer, there we go. So then we do whatever, uh, whatever method you want to use in solving uh, the determinant. So uh, let me do the diagonal method. And then let's multiply. So this will be 4 times x times 1 plus y times 1 times negative 1 plus 3 times 2 times 1. And then we subtract the products going up. So this will be m minus minus 1 times 4 times 1 minus 3 times 1 times x minus y times 2 times 1. And then, so let's simplify. This is 4x minus y plus 6 plus 4 minus 3x minus 2y. And then combining like terms, uh, x's, so we get an x, and then we get a minus 3y, and then 6 plus 4 is plus 10 equals 0. So we don't have to change anything here. This is the equation of the line. 
So try this example here. Find the equation of the line passed into the points negative 3, negative 1, and 3, 5. So if you tried it out, you would have gotten the equation x minus 2y plus 2 equals 0. And then note that this method for finding an equation of a line works for all lines, including horizontal and vertical lines. For example, an equation of the vertical line passing through 2, 0, and 2, 2, you could try that out and see that it will work out.